Well, hello everybody. Good morning. Thank you for attending this uh, immersion speech. So this is um, Harry Soin here from Advanced Energy. He's a senior director for technical marketing. I am Oriol Chabanel. I'm a solutions engineer for Summer, and we will be speaking about power distribution in immersion. Basically, power distribution in immersion is a work stream which is part of the, of the immersion uh, project. And basically, what we are typically uh, considering in this work stream are the possible hurdles when we speak of immersion and power distribution in tanks or, or any other uh, types of immersion in the, in the OCP community. So um, the roadmap is basically the evaluation of the open power rack, power delivery implementations. As you may know, the OCP version 3 rack now is um, having a bit of uh, differences with the previous OCP version 2, by instance, the voltage used in the bus burst. We are evaluating also uh, the power delivery strategies and limitations inside the immersion tanks that the, that the different uh, companies nowadays are bringing up to the market. We're also running technical analysis of power delivery proposals, mechanical and electrical safety analysis and validation, technical specifications and authoring, and also schemas. And, and well, we are also counting inside this work stream with a lot of uh, matter, subject matter experts and, and projects coordination and harmonization. Um, but basically, what, what, what we have done here to, to understand what is the power distribution in a tank. So basically, taking a typical rack air of uh, OCP where it's just standing vertically and you are plugging in the power shelves, the servers, and everything else. In immersion, we are doing reverse. We're having a tank typically which is full of fluid and then you are bringing the servers vertically down to the top, down to the bottom, sorry. So um, when we were thinking about how we can achieve this with the OCP, uh, we just turned the thing horizontally, right? So we have... Uh, tanks with the buzzwords at the bottom, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, the, the lid which is up on it, and then we have the place to, to put the power shelves and the servers, as same as we will do in, a, in an horizontal rack, but vertically down on it. And then it started all of the thinking of how we can achieve this, how we can make it feasible to be in data centers and, and everywhere else. Actually, one of the benefits of, of having these in, in, in immersion is that we, we can avoid all of the power cables that we will need for traditional 19-inch solutions where all of the cables are connecting to the servers and to the PDUs, that is creating also sometimes capillarity within the fluid. And with these solutions, speaking about power distribution in immersion, we can avoid that. Um, at the moment, we are focusing in the work stream deliverables. We are speaking mostly with single-phase immersion. Paul here made a very good question. and make any changes on the hardware running live at the moment. We were thinking on doing the same, so in case that you need to open your tank lid and just lift up one server, one power shelf, replace a component, you still can do it with single phase immersion because the tank is not sealed, the tank is not working at a high temperature, so you can do any of that during the live operation of the tank. Um, so this is including, of course, the rack tank specs, flows, sizes, server densities, uh, liquid and fluid specs that um, our colleague Peter Cooper is uh, running in the material and compatibility, as he was saying before. Um, the IT hardware providers, temperatures, uh, warranties, um, also the hurdles that, that Raul and David were running. Um, power providers, um, Harry will be speaking a lot of these and all of the type of connectors, voltages, uh, different also signal integrity that Andy was commenting in the other session that we might face and also the bus bars, uh, different type of bus bars that we are considering at the now, they are being key for defining this. Um, because the bus bar at the end will be the channel which will drive all the electricity within the servers, but in the immersion. So um, at the moment, there is also ongoing topics open for discussion. As Rolf said many times, we are seeking for people which is joining our um, our our power distribution immersion work stream, sorry, so we can have these different um, implementation uh, hurdles that, we, that we're discussing, that we can change, that we can adapt. Um, 
in that, for example, there is a very important topic, which is the safety. We were, we were considering, we were having a very good debate about the, um, the, the density and the safety about the buzzers. So, by instance, in, in a tank, if you have the buzzers at the bottom and not vertically, and you have servers which are hanging in there, you can have maybe a screw which is falling down and can touch a buzzer, maybe create a short circuit. So, besides the typical safety things that we are having in immersion, now with uh, the, the bus bars, now with the power distribution, there is a next step, right? So this is all including the power shelf architecture, density expectation, and also the equipment for human and safety qualifications. On that, so this is a tank update. Basically, this is um, how a tank will be looking from the up on it, if, if I will be looking at tank like that, I will be seeing, um, in this case, the left and right CDUs at the corners. And as the last OCP version 3 specification is relating, a central buzzer, sorry, here, a central buzzer, which is in the middle. OK, this will be an example of 50 kilowatts uh, emplacement uh, respecting the, the central buzzer, as I say, positioning of it. You can see there in the drawing how um, this left side and that right side will be a distributor of the fluid, which is respecting the natural convection going from the bottom to the top and placing the buzzer in the middle. Um, which is also in a very good position because typically the natural convection is having um, the fluid coming cold from the bottom and then at the top of the tank going to the sides where it's warm. So this, this bus bar is always very well cooled, very uh, stable at, a, at, a, at, at the same temperature. Um, in here you can see uh, the bus bar, so that will be the option for 100 kilowatt, right? So we can have in, in one tank 100 kilobyte of density of power computing and the bus bar attachments, the way we are uh, doing this with the community to understand that there is not any weight which is relying on the bus bar. There is not any power shelf server standing on the bus bar. It's stopping on the sides of the tank here. So you can basically have all the weight in the corners and just the, the clip connecting to the bus bar, which is making a, a good connection. Um, here you can see a bit more of, of, of how this looks, right? So from the top and, and, and the bottom. So this will be a small tank. This is a cut. It's cut by, by the middle. But this will be the CDU, the cooling distribution unit, which is basically pumping up the, the fluid and also having a heat exchanger inside to, to, to cool down the, the fluid temperature and move that to the, to the water that is coming from the bottom, from the side. Um, and here you have a power shelf example and three spaces for bus bars at the bottom. Why is it like that? Well, in the future, if we are keeping up the density that we are having at the moment, we might not need just one bus bar in the center, as you can see here, but maybe we may need three so we can differentiate that power. We can have in the servers connecting to different bus bars, level the, the load and have more efficient power distribution. And sorry, this is also, I'm handing up to, to Harry, which Thank will you. be explaining with a bit more of detail the part of the power shelf, the bus bar, and the connectors to distribute the power within the tank. All yours, Harry. Thank you. Thank you, Ariel. Uh, good morning. Just carry on the theme. You know, as, as you probably know, we talked about power distribution in immersion. Many of you are familiar with ORV3. The specification of the power shelf, if you're looking at ORV3, you know, it, it's a one OU system giving you up to 18 kilowatts of power. So that's a three kilowatt power module. Each power module times six gives you 18 and N plus one redundancy, right? So, so the purpose is we heard about OAI and all the other workloads and all we are seeing is the power going exponentially up. So the thing is, as a community, and you know, with input from all the other power vendors, we've been working together to see, to support that workload, what is immersion going to do for us? So if you're looking at this, uh, this, this, uh, yes, I think is, this the, is the green one. Uh, the, yeah, yeah, of yeah. course, there, there we are. So one OU system provides you 18 kilowatts of power. So what we are assuming in the same space, uh, the advantage is this is gonna give you 50 kilowatts. So imagine in one OU space, uh, the whole system is going to give you 50 kilowatts of power. So this is really agnostic. So all the different power vendors could create their own power solutions, whether they use three-phase output PSUs or single-phase to give you one uh, to give you uh, 
Oh, what happened here? Oh, to give you oh, in one OU 50 kilowatts. And in two OU, we can get up to 100 kilowatts. So just imagine, in two OU, at, at currently without immersion in air, you are limited to 36 kilowatts of power. So what we are proposing, and again, Ralph has said, you heard from Oriel, we need everyone's participation to understand the needs. And we believe uh, having a 2 OU 100 kilowatts is going to provide you up to like 75 to 80 watts per cubic inch of power. Uh, so that's good for workload, so a tank will be able to address it. And, you know, power is the last thought. So power will, for, for power to just take a small space and have all the other space available for all the other workloads. Uh, so that's the that's direction we are going in. Uh, moving forward, and how do we make that happen? So we've been working, you know, we talked about power. To have that power, we need the input connector and the output connector. Now here, we've been working very closely with Amphenol, and this is really an, an amazing thing. If you look at the output, the, the currently, if you see the ORV3 racks in the front, they use the bar clip connector. And their study indicates, you know, at, at the currently ORV3 system uses 400 linear feet per minute. If you do immersion, you can get up to 200% increase with the same current. So this is how we are going from 18 kilowatts to 50 kilowatts, where your connector are able to handle up to 200% more. So that is for the output connector. And similar study was carried out for the PSU. I mean, if you're looking at these connectors here, uh, this, is, see, this is right at the output, right? This is your bar clip connector. And here, again, 200% increase uh, in BK600. Uh, this is from Amphenol. Amphenol is also looking at a BK1000 for a higher current. So essentially, a, five, a 50 kilowatt means 50 volts output. A rough math translates that into 500 amps of current, and uh, uh, 500 amps of current, and this connector can uh, uh, can handle that without any difficulty. Uh, we do the same thing for uh, IT gear connector. IT, you know, IT gear is going to be immersed alongside the power shelf. And if you look at the numbers using immersion, that gives you about 132% of cooling. So all in all, what I have presented, the trend of power is going up. In the past, each rack was 10 kilowatts. Nowadays, most of the racks that are shipped are from 18 to 50 kilowatts. In the future, you, you make the guess. We are, what we are seeing is 100 to 200 kilowatts of power. And we don't believe that could be done without immersion. So we definitely need immersion. And we have seen the roadmap here for power shelf, for the connectors. We still need to do work on all the other elements that make up the tank on CDUs, uh, bus bar, bus bar support. So we need everyone's help to see how we can you know, make this picture complete and, you know, focus on all the other elements uh, as we discuss this in, in the upcoming calls uh, as we move forward. So essentially, what is next? Uh, you know, we, will, we are working on the document, putting the power shelf specifications in, bus power specification, and we will be getting everyone's help. And as we focus on the safety aspects, signals, magnetics, magnetic saturation. There's a lot of things that need to be looked at as we move forward. So we need everyone's help. Please get involved uh, so you know we can uh, take it to the next step. Thank you. Yeah, so we, we do have time for some questions. Anything to do with power and immersion or anything else you have in mind? Yeah, please. Would you mind going to the microphone? Uh, hello. Very nice presentation. Hello. Uh, I would like to ask, I see two different directions. I see one direction on power supply going to 100 kilowatt uh, through thicker connectors and more reliable connectors to provide that uh, power. And mm -hmm. the other direction is having three bus bars inside the tank, that, like uh, shown right. before. In, in, in. So mm -hmm. this is a debate which way or we are going you are thinking of incorporating both of them well perfect there you go i mean i think you answered the perfect question at this point looking at what we the input we're getting from connector guys they believe the bus bar one bus bar can handle up to 100 kilowatts of power but if the power need grows and 
we want up to 200 kilowatts of power, one bus bar in the middle may not be enough, so we may need up to three bus bars. And this is, again, the specifications are not firm. We are open for discussion, and based on everyone's input, we will decide what makes sense. Anything else you want to add? Yeah, just to say, yeah. so typically we are respecting what the OCP open rack versions are coming and releasing to the market, but also we are thinking on a scaling up in the future, so it may be that um, for some things in immersion, things are different because they are not designed by air at the beginning, so uh, we open other possibilities in case that we need to have more density than we have in the air right. to enable future solutions. By in this case, maybe central bus at the moment, but we may have three in the same time colliding with no issue. Okay. Actually, we achieved that before with the OCP version 2. The voltage was lower, less kilowatts, but we had more than one bus burst in the, in the bottom of the downward. Right. Okay. Thank you. That's a much. question? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Any other questions? I guess in respect of time, Ralph, I'll yes. hand it over to you. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, the next session is going to start in five minutes. One question. Um, sure, sure. Just go ahead. There was an update to the the amount of current that can go through the the bus bars. Right. Well, also you've shown 18 kilowatts mm -hmm. as a standard solution. Correct. Then going to 50 kilowatts. Is that the same hardware in immersion that's improving that much, or is it different hardware? I love that question. That's an excellent question. So when what we are using is ORV3 as a baseline. ORV3 specifies right now 73 millimeter by 500 millimeter PSUs or somewhere around there. So what we plan to do is to provide five or seven kilowatts of power in the same footprint. So you can take the same shelf, the whole enclosure, the, the ORV3 enclosure doesn't change, but your power blocks are defined or designed for immersion, so they're optimized. So, at, so that size you are able to go up power by twofold. This, this is how you get from 18 to 36 or 50. Does that increase the amount of space for the power converter yeah. because you don't have fans and things? So is, is that giving you extra room? It so does give you extra room, yeah. Okay. It, it gives you extra room, but the power has to be laid out differently, right? As we heard, you have to direct the fluid to the critical components. So it does give us room because you're taking the fan out, as you correctly pointed out, but the overall enclosed space remains the same. Cool. That doesn't change. Thanks. No more questions? All right. All right. We thank you both. Thank, thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you.